Hi everyone, welcome to the third lesson of the ESP32 Pixel course. In this lesson, I will teach you how to use the ESP32 Pixel board to display images from an SD card. Before we begin, we need to prepare two things, an SD card and a card reader. Insert the SD card into the card reader and connect it to the computer so that we can store the images we want to display on the SD card. Now, let's get started with the lesson. First, we find the code for Lesson 3 in the course files and open it. If you don't know where to download the course files, you can open the Alunit website and click on the wiki page. In the upper right corner of the wiki page, there is the Alunit GitHub entrance. I will put all the course materials on GitHub so that it is easy to update at any time and it is also convenient for you to download it. Once we open the code, let's take a look at which header files are included. In addition to the ones we used last class, we have added three new header files related to the SD card and file system. Therefore, when we need to use the SD card, we must remember to include these three header files. Next, I have defined the I.O. ports used by the SD card here. If you're unsure whether the pins are correct, you can refer to the schematic of the pixel board in the course files. In the SD card section, you will see that the three pins are MOSI, MISO, and SCK. They are all connected to the MCU pins. Now, let's check the MCU section to see which I.O. ports these pins are connected to. As you can see, MISO is connected to I.O. 11, which is consistent with what is declared in the code. SCK is connected to I.O. 12, also declared as IO12 in the code, and MOSI is connected to IO13. Now you should know how to find the corresponding pins for the SD card. Next, let's take a look at what operations are performed in the setup function. In the setup function, this portion of code was also introduced in the last class. First, it initializes the serial port. Next, this segment provides an initialization sequence for the touch screen, and this line turns on the screen's backlight. The last line refers to the CS pin of the SD card, also known as the enable pin. To save I.O., the CS pin is connected to the I.O. port of an expansion chip in the hardware design. Here, you can see it's connected to I.O. 2, so we need to use the I.O. driver function from the PCA9557 library to enable it, which is activated when the CS pin is low. Next, let's look at the following section, which was also used in the last class for initializing the display. Since we want to display images from the SD card, we need to initialize the display functionality after powering on the pixel board. Only then can we initialize the SD card functionality. I have placed all the code for initializing the SD card in the SD underscore init function, so we can jump over and take a look. You can open the search box by using the shortcut Ctrl plus F and press Escape to exit the search. In this function, I use the begin function from the SPI library to initialize SPI. This initialization function requires us to fill in several necessary parameters, which are the pins used by SPI. If you are unsure about the order of the pins, you can hover your mouse over the function, and it will display the name of each parameter. Based on these names, you can fill in the corresponding pins. The CS pin for the SD card is filled in here, but since I connected this pin to an expansion I.O. chip, I entered dash 1 to indicate that this pin is not controlled by this SPI. Below is the initialization function for the SD card, where the first parameter operates in the same way. The second parameter is the previously initialized SPI, which is passed as an argument to the SD card's initialization function. This means that the SD card is specifically designated to use this SPI, rather than another one. When there are multiple SPI devices, it is essential to specify the SPI for each device using the SPI protocol. The last parameter is the write speed for the SD card, which is sufficient and does not need further adjustment. Once the SD card is successfully initialized, it will print a message in the serial monitor indicating that the SD card has been mounted successfully. 
Next, the listdir function is used to list all the file names on the SD card, where forward slash represents the root directory. Therefore, it will print the names of all files in the root directory to the serial monitor. Finally, a message indicating that the initialization is complete is printed. At this point, all the code in the setup function has been executed. Now, let's take a look at the code in the loop function, which is very straightforward using only the display photo function and the delay function. The display photo function can be found below. Its implementation is quite complex, as it needs to read the file header to determine if the file is in BMP format, check if the color depth is 16 bits, and read the color of each pixel in the file. Finally, it uses the draw pixel function from the Lovian GFX library to output the image to the screen. This function requires three parameters. The first parameter is the file name, which we can fill in with the name of the image file. I will now insert my USB drive to check if I have filled it in correctly. I have already placed five BMP format images on the SD card, and the names of these five images correspond to those displayed in the code. If you modify the names of the images on the SD card, you will also need to change them in the code to match the names you want to display. If you want to place the images to be displayed in a specific folder on the SD card, that is also possible. Just add the corresponding path to the image names in the code, and don't forget the forward slash that represents the root directory. The last two parameters represent the coordinates for drawing the image, with 0, 0, representing the origin. Additionally, if your code has been modified correctly, but you still cannot successfully mount the SD card or display images, it may be because the file system of your SD card is not FAT32 format. Right-click on your USB drive and open Properties. Here you can see what type of file system your SD card is using. If it is not FAT32 format, you will need to format it to change the file system type. Of course, before formatting, remember to back up any important content on the SD card, as formatting will erase all data on it. Select FAT32 format, then click Start, and you're all set. OK, the code has been modified. Next, remove the SD card from the card reader and insert it into the board. Then, use a USB-C cable to connect the pixel board to your computer. After that, return to the Arduino IDE, configure the compilation environment, and you can upload the code to the board to see the results. I have already explained the process of configuring the compilation environment in detail in the first lesson so I won't elaborate on it here. Once configured, click here to upload the code. The upload speed is quite fast, taking about a minute. When the upload is complete, you will see the pixel board automatically reset and display the images from the SD card in order. It looks great and seems perfect for creating a photo album. Go ahead and give it a try. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next lesson.